Hey, welcome back, guys. Here I'm going to show and talk about my Japanese Sega Saturn games. And in case you didn't watch it, I released a video just before this one uh, showing my U.S. Saturn games. I recommend watching that one first so this all makes a little bit more sense. Uh, unless you're just really just interested in just looking at my Japanese Saturn games for whatever reason. But anyway, yeah, um, so like I said at the end of the last video, most Saturn fans know that the Japanese uh, Saturn games are where it's at, mainly because... Uh, the U.S. branch of Sega abandoned the Saturn, and uh, there were very few games released in 1998. So pretty much the system peaked from 1995 to 1997, and in Japan it did have a couple more years left in it. And actually, um, it did have an audience in Japan because weirdly enough, it the Saturn outsold the N64 in Japan, which is crazy to think about. Of course, both of them were outsold heavily by the PS1, but still. You know, the Saturn did have a dedicated fan base in Japan, so they did continue to support it for a while. And uh, for that reason, you're going to find that a lot of exclusives stayed in Japan. Um, so, yeah, let's get on with the video. All right, before I show my collection, I just want to show you guys how to play Japanese Saturn games in case you're interested. Uh, obviously, you can just buy a Japanese Sega Saturn, though you wouldn't be able to play um, U.S. or European games natively. Um, that is an option. Another is to hardware mod your Saturn to play Japanese games. I'm not exactly sure how to do that, but there are tutorials online. You can, you know, buy mod chips and stuff. Or you could do what I did and just buy this uh, action replay cartridge, which you can just put in the cartridge slot. And uh, that allows you to play Japanese Saturn games as well as use cheat codes like you would associate with any action replay. And also back up your saves on the cartridge, so... Really useful uh, little device, and uh, I'm going to link to it in the description in case you're interested. All right, so we're starting with Rockman X3, uh, otherwise known as Mega Man X3 here. And off the bat, you'll notice that Japanese Sega Saturn cases use the traditional CD jewel case, whereas, you know, the U.S. Saturn games have those long boxes. And this is probably my favorite design for the jewel cases. I love the the golden strip on the side that says Sega Saturn. It, it, there's just something really appealing about it to me. But, but yeah, uh, Mega Man X3. Um, unfortunately, I was pretty underwhelmed with this purchase. Uh, I'm a huge Mega Man fan. I love Mega Man X3 on the Super Nintendo. Um, but, yeah, I just wasn't a big fan of the Saturn version. Uh, well, for, first, I, th I think this was released in, uh, in Europe as well, uh, Mega Man X3 Saturn. Um, but... Unfortunately, with older European PAL releases, you never know if they're going to run correctly or not. So if you were to get this game, um, I'd probably get the Japanese version. But, but anyway, um, yeah, I was just really underwhelmed with this version. Um, for one, it has a long load screen at the beginning when you boot up the game, uh, which is kind of annoying, though obviously not a big deal. Uh, second of all, it has these borders around all sides of the screen when you're playing the game, which for me is a little annoying because I play most of my... Uh, retro games on a 20 inch CRT TV so uh, to have borders there makes the screen size even smaller so it's a little it's a little small when I play the game and a little yeah a little annoying like I said um, third I don't think the game controls that well on the Saturn controller at least the default control scheme but I just prefer the Super Nintendo or even the PlayStation controller for for Mega Man X games for whatever reason um, but yeah, to, to take advantage of the, the CD, uh, medium, it, uh, it introduces, uh, FMV cutscenes that when you boot up the game and also for the, uh, boss intros before you, uh, play each stage, it'll have a little FMV cutscene, which is kind of neat. Um, they change the music, so instead of the Mega Man X3 infamous, like, butt rock style music, it has the, uh, it has kind of a smoother lounge type sound to it which i actually quite like i really do like the uh the soundtrack for for this version of the game but um you know other than that i think i just prefer Mega Man x3 on super nintendo and i've heard the playstation version of this is a little bit better i i can't confirm that and you could also play this version of the game on the uh ps2 and gamecube Mega Man x collection and it won't have that load screen at the beginning and and it is a little bit better so Unfortunately, I'm, I'm guessing the Saturn version might even be the worst way to play this game, other than maybe the PC version back in the day, but but yeah, um, 
I would recommend playing this through other means if possible. All right, and here we have Akumajo Dracula X, Nocturne of the Moonlight, or as we know it, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And uh, many people don't even know that this came out on the Saturn. Obviously, it didn't come out here, but, but it did come out in Japan. And this game had a lot of potential because the Saturn is such a 2D powerhouse, and this is a, you know one of the best 2D games ever. But unfortunately, it does have some... some uh, I would say minor uh, issues. For example, it has more slowdown than the PlayStation version. Um, the some of the visual effects aren't as impressive. So, for example, when you t uh, turn into mist on the PlayStation version, it's kind of a smooth, transparent image. Whereas on the Saturn, since the Saturn had issues with transparencies, it's just kind of a jumbled assortment of dots to create the illusion of uh, transparency when you turn into mist so uh it's a little underwhelming on the graphical side and performance side and uh, of course the playstation version has these empty corridors uh between each set large section of the map uh which is there to mask load times that's also in the saturn version but in addition to that it'll have a load screen on top of that so there's an extra load which, which is kind of annoying and also, when you when you want to bring up the map screen, on the PlayStation, all you need to do is just hit the dedicated map button and you'll get it instantly. Whereas on the Saturn, you have to pause the game and then press, I believe, the L button to bring up this, the uh, map screen. Which is, which is pretty annoying because there's also a delay when you pause the game in general. So, in this type of exploration game, you wouldn't... You don't want to wait a long time just to get the map. Because you're going to constantly be checking it throughout the game, so... It's a little cumbersome in that way, but negatives aside, I really do like the Saturn version because it does ex exclusive stuff that isn't in any other versions. Not in the PlayStation version, the XBLA version, or the PSP version. Um, for example, uh, you can play as Maria, who you who's in the PlayStation version as an NPC, but you can actually play as her in the Saturn version, and she plays really well. Like she's really fun to play as. She has a lot of uh, cool special moves. Um, she's very quick and, and um you can play through her story in like 20 to 25 minutes if you know what you're doing which, which so it's like a nice pick up and play thing for when you're bored there you can play as maria in the psp version but she plays completely differently and, and honestly it's not as fun um, in my opinion um and when you're playing as alucard the standard uh symphony of the night character um you can play you can fight Maria as a boss in the middle of the game, which is really nice. And it, and it makes more sense within the context of the story. So so uh, th that's neat. And there are also two additional areas that aren't in the PlayStation version. Um, there's this, One of them is kind of underwhelming. It's this kind of like prison-style place where, where there's a lot of ghosts. Uh, which is actually kind of nice in a way because you can access this area early in the game. And they, the ghosts provide a lot of experience points. So you can level up really quickly pretty early in the game. So game... like. Game mechanics-wise, it's actually a pretty nice new area. And the second area I quite like, it's, it's this kind of foresty area. Um, where, and there's a lot of inter interesting enemies there, including this really weird tree with a face on it. And it has a really funny facial expression. Um, so I do like that area. And there's some exclusive items as well. Um, some notable ones are a rainbow cape, where you periodically change the color of your cape uh, as you play through the game, as you go into new areas, which is really cool. And uh, you can also get these shoes that allow you to run when you double tap the forward button. So the extra movement speed is nice. Um, it probably should have been in the PlayStation version, to be honest. But it's a nice addition. Um, so yeah, while, while this isn't the definitive version, like, I would say if you were playing this game for the first time, it should be on PlayStation. Because it performs a lot better and, and it does have less load times and it's a little less cumbersome to play. And also, <laughs> the important thing is... Uh, the Saturn version is unfortunately only in Japanese, so you won't really know what you're doing if this is your first playthrough. Um, unless you just want to play as Maria, because in Maria's story, um, there's no text, so you can just play and, and kind of get through it without knowing Japanese. But uh, my recommendation would be to play the PlayStation version or the XBLA version or whatever first, just so you know how to get through the game, and then maybe play the Saturn version later. Um... Because, like I said, it's tough to get through if you don't know how to 
um, you know, just read Japanese. Um, there's one other thing I was going to mention about this version. Oh, yeah, yeah. It also has a sound test mode, which is really nice. And, of course, the uh, Symphony of the Night is famous for having one of the best soundtracks ever. Um, and it has some exclusive tracks, too, that are remixes of old Castlevania tunes, like Bloody Tears and stuff. So it, it's just a really neat game in a way. It could have been better, you know, if, if the development team had more time to work on the game. But even so, I think it's a really... Uh, worthwhile port to play especially if you're a symphony of night fan it's one of my favorite games ever so i don't regret buying it it is a little on the pricey side these days but um but yeah it, it I, I would say if you like symphony of the night you should definitely give this one a shot all right and of course the saturn is the japanese uh, library specifically is known for having a lot of 2d fighting games and those were a little passe by the time they came out in, in in the U.S. at least, because as we know, kind of the industry shifted towards 3D games, especially in the U.S. and the West. People weren't all interested in playing 2D games. So unfortunately, a lot of the uh, 2D fighting games that were on the Saturn stayed in Japan. But um, yeah, first we'll start with actually one of the worst <laughs> fighting games I've ever played. Sailor Moon Super S, Various Emotions, I believe that's the subtitle. Um, so yeah, basically, so... I watched Sailor Moon as a young kid, and I, I did like it, though I, I didn't think about it for years afterwards. Then as a teen in high school, I kind of got back into it. I watched the uh, Japanese version for the first time, uh, found out that they, they made a lot of changes to the U.S. version. Like, they, they changed genders of characters to not make them gay. Um, and two of the Sailor Guardians, or Scouts, or whatever you want to call them, were lovers, um, female, both female. But, um... In the U.S., they made them cousins instead, or just happened to be really close to each other, which is pretty lame. So, um, so yeah, I was I was super interested in Sailor Moon in in high school for that reason, just because I found it so weird that they made these changes, and and it was a really fun show to watch. And um, I found out that while while they never released any of the Sailor Moon video games in the U.S., there were a ton in Japan. So I, for whatever reason, I just wanted to play through like all of them pretty much, and so I got this. And fortunately, it's a, it's actually a pretty terrible fighting game. Um, for one, it looks terrible. <laughs> um, hopefully, you're seeing it in the video right now. It, and the moves are super laggy. And uh, for whatever reason, in the story mode, I can never get past the first opponent. They just completely kick my ass. Um, not that I've been that persistent in trying to beat them, but like, but it's just too hard for whatever reason. The AI is just crazy and too aggressive. And it's hard to fight back because, like I said, the moves are really delayed. Um, and it starts off really promising, too, because when you start the story mode, there's this uh, cutscene that basically looks like it was taken out of the anime. And it's completely new footage. And it has the original voice actors, and it looks really nice for Saturn era FMV. So it, it starts out promising, but then it just goes downhill after that. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, it's not a good game. This was actually the improved version because this originally came out on PlayStation and believe it or not, the game was even more, it had even more lag and it was even worse than this, though the AI wasn't as punishing. So even though this version is technically better in some ways, the AI is brutal in the Saturn version. So, so yeah, it's, I would not recommend this. The only silver lining is that for whatever reason the disc art is really nice and colorful and the packaging is pretty nice but other than that i would stay away from this one all right and the next fighting game we'll look at is x-men versus street fighter and the reason why this box is bigger is because it comes with a four mega bit i think it's a bit well four mb um ram cartridge and if you have the action replay cartridge that I uh, talked about earlier in the video, you won't need this dedicated one because the action replay cartridge includes the 4 MB uh, RAM inside of it. So it's kind of a luxury to to have the dedicated 4 MB. It's not necessary. But basically, um, if you're into Marvel vs. Capcom, this is kind of what came before it. it it's, it's a tag team... Uh, fighting game with X-Men and Street Fighter characters as the title might <laughs> indicate to you 
And uh, it kind of has a similar framework of, of mechanics to Marvel vs. Capcom. It's just a little less over the top, and it, do it doesn't have the crazy roster size that MVC 1 and 2 had. So it, it is fun, but for me personally, as a huge MVC fan, I, I would prefer to play that on the Dreamcast over this. Um, but if, if you don't like the over the top craziness of the uh, MVC games, um, this is a nice middle ground between Street Fighter and MVC. Not much more to say. Um, uh, oh yeah, I guess one thing I should say is that when you're buying fighting games on the Saturn, it is important to note a couple things. One, it, it probably will be the superior version to, let's say, the PlayStation version. It's almost always the case. But two, unfortunately, I, I kind of mentioned it in the uh, US collection video I made, that playing these types of games multiplayer is difficult because it's hard to find people in real life who are as good as you at this game and even know what the game is because this is a Japan only game. So what are the odds that someone in the U S or Europe or wherever you live owns this game and knows how to play it and is interested in playing it and, and it's on your skill level, like I mentioned. So it's like, it's, it's hard to find people to play old multiplayer games with, unless it's something that was super common, like, like I mentioned in the previous video, like Mario Kart 64 or Smash Brothers or games that, you know, more people are more likely to have played. So do keep that in mind. Even if it seems alluring to buy a fighting game, make sure that you have someone to play with or you're just or make sure that you're content with just playing through the arcade mode. Because that is the thing about these older fighting games. They tend not to have that many modes. They t they mainly just have an arcade mode and some don't even have a training mode. So it's hard to learn how to play them. Um, so that that is something to note when, when buying fighting games on the Saturn. Alright, and the next game is a game I got this year and was very pleasantly surprised by. Um, it, the Japanese title is Vampire Savior, but we would know it as Darkstalkers 3, which is the uh, Capcom fighting game series that's kind of like Street Fighter, and it kind of influenced the Marvel vs. Capcom games in some of the mechanics, but... Um, but yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by this one. I, it, it's one of the cheaper Saturn games too. I think I paid like twenty dollars for this. So this is one of the best like value to quality ratio you can get on the Saturn, in my opinion. This is like a no brainer to me. Um, in case you don't know what the Dark Star or Dark Stalker series is about, it's kind of this really strange uh, like monster, like classic monsters mashed up into a fighting game. Uh, it has some really crazy character designs that are really interesting to, uh, visually, and it has amazing music. Um, the mechanics are super smooth with super smooth animations. And it just plays like a Capcom fighter from the mid to late 90s, and it's just... Yeah, it's just super fun to play. Um, I, I think the reason why this series never caught on... Well, one, is because the naming convention was a little weird. Like, in the U.S., Darkstalkers 2 is called like Night Warriors and then it just didn't have consistent naming and then also it didn't really have like a face of the franchise like a, a really iconic character I think Morgan later became that character like after the series was already dead but while it was alive like I don't feel like it had this iconic character that you could latch on to like in Street Fighter it was Ryu and Mortal Kombat it's Sub-Zero and Scorpion you know Characters you can really or easily recognize and kind of associate with the series. Like it didn't really have that for this for this series, in my opinion. But the characters are great. Like it it does that more again. It has I, I don't know what her uh, actual name is, but the initials are BB Hood. Um, she's kind of this little Red Riding Hood little girl who also happens to use like weapons and explosives. With <laughs> it, it's really funny. And yeah, they're just a ton of like really interesting characters. And, uh, yeah, even though I can only play by myself, basically, because I don't know anyone who plays, the, you know, the Darkstalkers games, it's super fun even just to play in arcade mode. And, um, it does have an English language option that you can unlock by playing through the story mode once, which, which is, uh, which is nice. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't say enough good things about this game. I was really surprised by it, and, it, and it's just one of my favorite fighting games now, uh, Saturn or not. Yeah, this is definitely a staple, in my opinion. Alright, so moving on to another genre that the Saturn 
was known for, but unfortunately not in the U.S., uh, the shoot 'em up genre. And um, this was always a, a genre that was more popular in Japan than the U.S., but especially so in the mid to late 90s. Uh, first, we'll start out with Dodon Pachi. This is kind of a famous one. This is one of the first uh, quote unquote bullet hell shooters, and that is kind of a controversial subgenre because it, 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 they're, they're known for their difficulty. They're just a ton of bullets on screen at all times, and it really takes a lot of memorization and skill to get through these games. And normally, I don't even like the bullet hell you know, subgenre, but in the case of Dodon Pachi, for whatever reason, this game just clicks with me. Uh, even though it is insanely difficult. It's just fun to play through. Um, it, it has like this rocking electronic or electric guitar music. It just like there's something about the vibe that I really like in the visuals, and it, it's just super satisfying to play through. And uh, it's not too expensive from what I remember. I mean, I got this like a decade ago, probably, so I probably shouldn't say. But um, yeah, it, I think I think it's pretty reasonably priced on the Saturn. It actually is also on the PlayStation, and surprisingly a very good port on that. Arguably better in some ways from what I've heard, but it, it is more expensive on uh, PlayStation. Um, but but yeah, I I would definitely recommend Dota on Pachi. Next up we have one of my favorite Saturn games, probably my second favorite behind Nights in the Dreams, Radiant Silver Gun. This is a, this is a famous, um, famous one but for a couple of reasons. One, it's made by Treasure, which, in case you didn't see the u.s collection video i made um and don't know who treasure is uh they were they were kind of a, a, a one of the more famous at least among like the hardcore gaming crowd like they're, they were known for their action games like gunstar heroes and, and raid and silver gun and ikaruga and sin and punishment and stuff like that um unfortunately they barely exist anymore <laughs> um but but yeah th it was known for that and it was also just one of those legendary expensive games back in the day it's like oh yeah radiant silver gun i it's a game i wish i could play but it's it's like 150 dollars or whatever um and, and it didn't come out here until it came out on um xbox live arcade and i believe it's or no i definitely know it's playable on xbox one as well through backwards compatibility um but but yeah and and one of the weird things is even though it was known for how expensive it was back in the day it actually hasn't creeped up in price as much as other saturn games like i've seen saturn games go from like being a 30 dollar game to a 300 dollar game this has gone from like 150 to like 180 dollars in the 10 years that i've kind of followed this game so um so that's nice at least but the question with these expensive games is always is it worth the hype is it worth the money and this is one of the few cases where I, or not few, but this is one of those cases where I would say absolutely. I I have not regretted my Radiant Silver Gun purchase. Period. It, it's it it plays uniquely from other um, shoot 'em up games. It it has um seven different weapon types, and it's perfect for the Saturn controller because the Saturn has six face buttons and one and two shoulder buttons. So six of the traditional um, button or the traditional um shooting types uh you know one is just traditional you're just shooting forward one is just you're shooting behind you um one is a lock on um you know there are different weapon types that you use in different scenarios based on what's happening on screen and the the seventh weapon is your i believe it's just called the silver gun and it's kind of a sword where you can absorb the pink bullets that periodically appear in the game and if you absorb enough of them, that's kind of your super weapon. It would be your smart bomb in another shooting game. But in this, it's your sword. It, it kind of, it's kind of this huge weapon that'll kill most of the things on the screen. And you're invincible while you do it. So you can't get hit. And you, you can use it strategically to get through like walls and stuff that you would normally get hurt by. So it, it's useful in many ways. And um, the, the interesting thing is that um, you're... Each weapon levels up the more you use it successfully. So the more you use them, the more powerful they are and possibly the more space they take on screen and stuff like that. So so there's a good progression from beginning to end. And the nice thing about the Saturn version, because this was released in arcades, though, like obviously barely anyone has played it since I believe it was Japan only. Um, but on, on the Saturn mode, it'll save the 
um, each uh, the kind of the levels that your weapons attain. So, let's say your traditional, your regular shooting weapon reaches level thirty in your first playthrough. Rather than going back to level one on your next playthrough, it'll stay at level thirty. So it, it just makes it easier to replay the game, and it doesn't feel like you're losing so much progress, and it, it just makes it easier to learn the game and, and makes it less frustrating. Because if you do play the traditional arcade mode where you start out at level one with all your weapons, it's a very difficult game. But on Saturn mode, it's Saturn mode. It's very you know, it. it it's it feels a lot easier to get through and it's a very long game as well i think it takes over an hour which is pretty long for any uh type of shoot 'em up they're typically much shorter than that and and the visuals look amazing it's very distinct like when you look at a screenshot of radiant silver gun you'll know that you're looking at radiant silver gun and you can't say that about that about a lot of shooters like a lot of the shooters kind of tend to look the same unless you're just a hardcore fan who can really distinguish you know one shooter from the other but but yeah, Radiant Silver Gun is is a masterpiece in my opinion. Super well designed. It's a game I always seem to revisit, and it's definitely worth the the pretty large price tag that it demands. All right, and next up we have the Parodius series. Um, I'm I'm just gonna show both of them at the same time because they're pretty self or er, they're pretty similar in a way. Um. The one on the left is the per Parodius Collection that has uh, two of the older Parodius games on it. And uh, the other one to the right is Sexy Parodius, which is the one I prefer. I'll get into that in a bit. Um, so basically, if you don't know what Parodius is, um, it's a, it's a shoot 'em up series by Konami. And as the name might indicate, it's a parody of a lot of their Konami franchises and it uses the game mechanics of Gradius, um, which is their kind of premier shoot, shoot 'em up series. Um, so yeah, it's a lot more accessible than Gradius. It, it's it's easier. It has it's more goofy and colorful. Um, yeah, it's just more approachable in general, which is part of the appeal. Because Gradius, while I love Gradius, I've I've always loved Gradius at least since Gradius three. Um, they get pretty punishing, especially after you die, because you lose a lot of your progress. But um, but yeah, the Protoss Collection, I do like it, but I feel like the games feel a little bit dated in the collection. So the it, when I whenever I play a Protoss game, it's almost always sexy Protoss, and I love the title because while there is a little bit of like lewd fan service, like very minor fan service. It's it's not sexy at all, which is why I find it funny and random. But um, but yeah, I just think I just I love the visuals in Sexy Parodius. They're they're even more colorful and flashy. Um, I like the game balance a little bit more. It's a little easier to get through, and yeah, it, it's just a spectacle throughout. And it's just a really it, I don't know. It's a really fun series, and I'm sad that it, that it didn't continue. Um, but, but yeah, these aren't too terribly priced. I mean, they're, it's probably like 50 bucks or so, which for a shoot 'em up is not that much. Like what, what I've learned in, in playing through a lot of shoot 'em ups is that most of them, uh, are hundreds of dollars. So when you can find a cheap shoot 'em up like this, relatively cheap anyway, um, I, especially of this quality, I, I would, I would go for it. All right, next is a game called Layer Section by Taito. And Taito is usually associated with stuff like Space Invaders, but uh, this is kind of a different type of shooter. Um, it's actually also one of the cheapest shoot 'em ups you can get. And, and it's also one of the best ones, too. So this is... If you want to get a shoot 'em up for the Saturn, this is probably what I would recommend first, just because, you know, it is very cheap and it, and it is a very good game. So it, it is a... A, a space vertical shooter it doesn't look that visually distinct but one of the interesting things is that as the title would indicate um there are two different layers there's kind of the traditional layer where you face enemies in front of you but there's also a layer below you where you can you can use your lock on laser to uh destroy enemies who are b beneath you which is kind of an interesting uh mechanic um there isn't that much to say because it is a traditional shooter in many ways but it, it's just fun to get through or to play through and and it is difficult but it, it's one of those things where you know you get a little bit better 
each time and it's just it's just more satisfying to to play like the more the longer you play uh, but but yeah it's definitely a game i'd recommend this did come out in the u.s i believe the name is like galactic attack or something but um the japanese version is, is much cheaper so i i would recommend getting the japanese version all right next up is Sokyu Garentai, which is kind of a mouthful. Um, it's made by kind of a, a an obscure but very beloved uh, shoot 'em up developer called Rising, and this is the uh, well, this is kind of the budget version of the game or the greatest hits, if you will. Um, and you can tell because it has the white borders or around the, the artwork of the game. And the reason why I got this version, because normally, like, if if you buy old games, it's like, ew, the the budget version. This, why would I want that? But the reason why I got it is because one, it fixes some of the bugs that were in the regular version, and two, it it comes with a demo of another uh, and one of their other uh, famous shoot 'em ups called uh, Battle Garega. Um, so if you ever wanted to try Battle Garega, which is kind of this. I wouldn't say legendary because not that many people know about it in the grand scheme of things. But if you're a shoot 'em up fan, uh, that that is one of the one of the uh, all time great shoot 'em ups. So it, it does give you a chance to play that or try it at least. But but yeah, Soki Grentai, it, it's actually very similar to Layer Section in a way because it uses the 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 layer mechanic where you can shoot and lock on enemies that are that are a layer below you, and. Um, I, I do prefer this delayer section by slightly. It actually is one of the best shoot 'em ups on the set that I've played. And uh it, it is on the cheaper side. I think it's like a fifty dollar game as well. Um Well layer section is like a twenty or thirty dollar game, but but yeah, anyway. Um I I love the the very like dystopian, oppressive tone of the game. It's it feels very like Terminator or Blade Runner y to me. Um the mu the music is very like I don't know, like I said, oppressive. Um, and I just love the overall design of the game. The the shooting feels really satisfying. The sound effects, um, it, it is a very challenging game, Ch more challenging than layer section, I would say. Um, I think Rising is just known for their very difficult games. It's not bullet hell, so it doesn't feel like you're just getting punished whenever you, <laughs> when, whenever you're playing, and it doesn't feel like you just have to, just avoid. You know, just this barrage of bullets it, it still feels fair in a way despite being very difficult but yeah it's one i, I would definitely recommend so as i'm not describing these better by the way i mean you can only do so much when you're describing shoot em ups but um but yeah um finally we have battle grega which i had just mentioned um this is one of the more expensive shoot em ups on the system i think it's like well it used to be way expensive it was like a 260 sixty dollar game but then they recently re-released the game on uh on ps4 and xbox one and, and it was ported by one of the best porting houses ever m2 they're, they're always known for their you know their accurate ports and, and lots of new features added so that actually dropped the price of the game pretty significantly i would say um it's it's probably 200 or less now and and when i bought it I bought it during an, an eBay sale where everything on the site was twenty percent off, so that's how I justified it to myself. But um, but yeah, Battle Grega, like I said, kind of among shoot 'em up enthusiasts, it is a, a legendary game. Um, the the thing about it though, like if you're not a shoot 'em up fan, you I think you would look at this game and wonder what the big deal is because when you look at the graphics, it looks like a traditional shoot 'em up. It's not flashy in any way. It's not like Radiant Silver Gun where it has this interesting hook. And, and the graphical style is very distinct. But the thing is, it's a very... It, it plays really well. Very satisfying. The, the sound effects are very satisfying. The, the bullets and, and the collision feels good. Um, and it has this system in the background where... Depending on how well or how poor you play... The game will change and become harder or easier. And um, that's, that's harder to market to people. Because it's hard to market things that you can't see that aren't as tangible but it is an interesting it, it adds an interesting element to the game that makes it feel like the game is different every time you play it um but yeah it's, it's a game I, I very much enjoy playing I'll, I'll pop it in 
uh, every now and then and just see how far I can get. And and, let, and with other good shooters, like every time I play, I feel like I can get a little bit closer to the end every time. Unfortunately, I haven't completed it yet, but but uh, I, I do inch closer each time, like I said. Um, but it, it's a great game. Um, I, I recommend that if you're interested in trying it, you get the Soki Garantai game with the demo or you just get it on Xbox One or PS4. Um, but yeah, the Saturn version is nice just because it, it is, you know, the original. Even though it isn't the arcade version, it, you're guaranteed not to have any lag because it is on a CRT and it is a retro system. And that is that is why, that is the appeal of getting the fighting games. I forgot to mention this earlier. Like, play, playing fighting games in the HD era, no matter how good of a TV you have, there's guaranteed lag no matter what. But if you do play these old standard definition games on a CRT, you're not going to experience any lag. So in some in some ways, the best way to play classic fighting games is still on a CRT. And that's why, you know, for Super Smash Bros. Melee, you see these 18-year-olds who have never even used a CRT. They, they buy these CRTs off Craigslist or, or whatever, and they play Melee on those. So, so yeah, for... For games that require like frame perfect, you know, game gaming or whatever, CRTs are still the best way to play. Though obviously there are some really nice upscalers like the XRB, XRGB Mini Frame Meister and the OSSC that that uh, let you play old games on an HD TV with relatively small lag. So that's just something to note. All right, so that's my Sega Saturn collection. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And like I said, it's one of my favorite retro consoles because its library embodies the pick up and play aspects of retro gaming that I love. And you know, when the console was new and relevant, it it was kind of stigmatized for being behind the times and, and ha focusing on 2D games when the industry was moving towards 3D. But I feel like now that we look back at it in hindsight, um, its library has aged super well. Like I said, it does have a lot of pick up and play games, and as I also said, when you're playing retro games, you don't have to deal with the politics that went on behind the scenes or the expectations of the consumer of the time. You can just see the games for what they are, and the Sega Saturn has an extremely uh, satisfying library, and uh, like I said, I, I uh, look forward to picking up more games in the future, though for the most part I would say I have most of the games. I've always wanted to try on the Saturn, but oh uh, yeah, let me know if you guys think I should, what other games I should get, and you know if you guys are looking to get into the Saturn and have questions, please feel free to ask, and uh, I'll do the best I can to answer those questions. But uh, yeah, until the next video, thanks for watching, and take care.